Hey, I'm Chip Foose here at Foose Design, and what I want to look at today is a 1970 Chevelle. I've always liked this car, but to me, it looked like when they designed the 1970 Chevelle, the rear bumper didn't fit the front of the car. Now, eventually, in 1971 or two, they did the rear bumper that, to me, belongs on the 70. But when they put that rear bumper on, they changed the front end, so now that bumper didn't match that front end. So what I want to do is take the front end of a 70 and the rear end of a 72. Let's bring those together. It'll look like it's all factory, but now they relate. I'm going to do a quick little sketch here of this car, and then I'll show you the components that I'm talking about and how I think this could work out real well together. Now, I've done several of these cars for customers as well as on overhauling, but I've never done what I would really like to do to one. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. While I was working on these cars, I really didn't think about what the car really needed. I just thought it was a cool car, but there was something that was kind of funny about them. And I was looking at the lights in the front end and I was looking at the rear bumper and how they really didn't relate. And I thought, but didn't they do one? And then when I looked at a 72, I realized that the rear bumper on a 72 should have been the rear bumper on the 70. It's a simple little fix. And I think everything would just bolt together. This can be a more of a cartoony type of sketch because what I really want to show is the front and the rear end and how the two would bring them together. I always thought that Chevelle was just a really cool proportion and it's a great muscle car. You can put plenty of power under that hood. You got lots of room under there. With the suspension, you can go to Hotchkiss and get a really cool suspension for it that's gonna perform, the car's gonna ride. You don't have to do a lot to this car to make it a really cool car. The reason I like to sketch with a ballpoint pen is it's ink and it's clean. With a pencil, you see I'm running my hand over the top of this drawing. If I was doing this in pencil and I was running my hand over the top of it, I'd be making an absolute mess out of this paper. So the ink seems to stay a bit cleaner and it also stays there when I run the marker over it. I can put some color right on top of the uh, ink and it doesn't change it.
So real simple, a nice stance, cool wheels. Just switch the bumpers. Now the front bumper I've done a little bit of modification to. I actually cut one of the round circles out of the rear bumper and stuck it into the front underneath the grill. Now to me, it's all factory pieces just put together so that it looks like this is the way the car should have come from the factory. Not making a lot of modifications, just taking pieces that existed and putting them together. If you were to ask me why I picked the 70 Chevelle as my favorite Chevelle, it's not necessarily my favorite Chevelle, it's the one that I like because I think it's the cleanest of all the designs. It just works. You know, the front end is, the top of the fender line comes around, rolls down and mates right to the top of the, the bumper. It's one single line. You go to the 71 or 72, all of a sudden there's lights that are disturbing that line. If you go to the 69 and, and 68, that's a really clean front end. I like that front end, it's really nice, but the body isn't as nice as the 70. I think they just kind of hit a balance with the 70 that really seemed to work. Muscular. The body panels just have these, it looks like muscles underneath bulging them out. And it just is done extremely well. I don't think there's another car company out there that has ever beat the design of the sheet metal shapes of the late 60s, early 70s General Motors cars. The muscle cars are absolutely beautiful. You know, I love a lot of other cars, but it's the shapes and the design that GM was doing back then that are, to this day, have never been topped. You never know why decisions are made based on design. It could be a committee that's making the decision. It could be an engineer that's saying, you know, if we change that, we're gonna save 40 cents on each vehicle. 40 cents on a vehicle when they're making millions of them or hundreds of thousands of them, that could pay for 200 engineers salary for, for a full year. You never know what the decision or why the decision was made, but obviously it worked for the company, not necessarily for the designers. The great thing is in this industry where we're modifying and customizing and personalizing a car, we're not worried about 40 cents on one part. We're worried about just building the most beautiful car we can build. And I feel lucky and blessed that I get to make a living out of building somebody's automotive dream.